You're listening to the Frequency and Flow podcast with Brie Couric, episode number 45. In this episode, I am going to be discussing my process about how I balance my own journey with human design, gene keys, and an intuition-led business so that you can understand the steps that I take and you can take those in your business as well. This is the fourth episode in a four episode series all about human design and business. So I recommend that you actually start with the very first episode in this series, which aired three weeks ago. It's titled The True Purpose of Human Design and Gene Keys in Business. And then listen to the next two episodes after that before you listen to this one. If you're all caught up, then let's dive in. With a line one in my 5-1 profile, there comes a very deep thirst for knowledge to continue to learn and to grow and to deepen your understanding of anything and everything that interests you. When I was younger, it manifested in me and through me. I was known as the trivia queen amongst all my friends because I just knew a lot about a lot and things that I learned just I stuck in my mind because I was so curious to learn things. As an adult, the drive of this line one in my profile has really been significant and influential in my career. At every single stage of my professional life and career, I've been motivated to learn more, to understand more, so that I can approach problems from an educated standpoint. On the flip side, that profile line one can also present a major challenge. The challenge to move forward with an incomplete set of information. As a line one, you want to understand everything before you take action on it. And the reality is that you'll probably never understand everything (laughs) before you're able to take action. So you're going to have to move forward when you don't always have all of the answers beforehand. This is truly the greatest fear of someone who has a line one to make decisions and to take action when they don't really understand all of the sides of the issue yet. To know that there's so much that they just don't know uh, and to continue to move forward anyways. This is a challenge that uh, has been a challenge for me for my entire career that I wanna know more before I take action, before I make decisions, and the reality is is that's not always possible. But this fear can, and it can be really paralyzing, right? Because you think you don't know enough to make an educated decision, and what if you're wrong and you have to change your decision? It can paralyze you into inaction, and that's also something that I've experienced. But you don't actually have to have a line one in your profile to experience this drive and this fear and this motivation to want to know everything before you take steps forward in your business. So even if you don't have that line one in your profile, you might be resonating with some of what I was describing right now. And that's because the one, the profile line one, and the number one in terms is a foundational element of the six line hexagram, which each of the six numbers that are in a profile come from. And everyone faces this challenge of moving forward when you don't have it all figured out yet. Because the six line hexagram, each number builds upon the other. So a two has elements of one and two. Someone who has a three has elements of one, two, and three, and so on and so forth, all the way up to six. It's like the one is the foundation and everything builds upon it. So if you resonate with what I say when I'm talking about line one, that's probably because you have elements of that line one within your profile, no matter what numbers make up your profile. So you probably might resonate with the fact that you felt this challenge of moving forward when you don't have it all figured out yet. You know, and it might not be the primary challenge in your life if you don't have that line one, but it's a challenge that's still lingering and still kind of keeping you in that zone from taking action or has kept you in that zone from taking action. Ultimately, What you're facing as a solopreneur, no matter the specifics of your design, is some form of imposter syndrome, which is preventing you from taking significant steps forward in your business. 
And that could be triggered by that line one shadow, or it could be triggered by another shadow area in your chart. For example, if you have an undefined head or ajna, you might be stuck in an action because you keep getting new ideas and new inspiration and new downloads, and you feel the pressure to get all of your questions answered, which makes you feel like you can't move forward until the ideas and the questions have either slowed down or you've been able to take action on everything that you had those ideas for so that you can finally move forward. I'm actually going to be talking more about this, this pressure and this uh, in action specifically in next week's podcast episode, but um, you know you can feel this pressure or this you know this inaction in different areas of your chart, and I know it personally through my line one, and I know others will experience it through their line one. But there's also many other places in your human design that you can face some sort of fear or a level of imposter syndrome before being able, feeling like you're able to move forward. The hard truth, though. <laughs> is that you're never going to have everything figured out before you feel ready to take big action in your business. You're not. You're not going to know everything at any point. You're never going to know it all. You're never going to know enough to have it all figured out before you take those big actions when it comes to moving forward in your business. But the difference between having that great idea and having something that is actually a business where you you have clients and customers and you're bringing in revenue. The biggest difference between those two things is the willingness and the ability to take action no matter what challenges are placed in front of you. It's not just about taking action for the sake of taking action. I've been there. I've done that. I've burned out from it. I can tell you that's not the answer is just taking a bunch of action. It's about taking aligned action, and it's about taking those aligned actions consistently, and it's about taking aligned action even though you don't have all the answers. Well, that feeling of imposter syndrome is still there flaring up inside of you. So it's taking action even though you feel that imposter syndrome. And this is what continues to lead me back personally to the importance of putting my intuition in the driver's seat of my business. Even though I don't have all the answers, my intuition certainly has more answers than I do as the human version of myself, my ego. And so at least if I'm relying on my intuition, my intuition has more answers and therefore the chance of me taking the next most aligned action is much, much higher when I listen to my intuition than when I listen to my own ego and human self. And leaning into this org structure for my business, the one that I talked about in the last week's podcast episode, leaning into this org structure where my intuition is what is making decisions on behalf of my business, where my human self, quote unquote, reports to my intuition, you know, my intuition manages my human self. My intuition is that CEO of my business, where the intuition that is the CEO then reports into my higher self that sits as the chairman of the board of directors of my business. All of that with human design and gene keys as the mentors and advisors that make my intuition as strong and resilient as it can be. Building that org structure into my business and into my daily activities is is truly what has given me the courage to face this imposter syndrome day after day, head on, and to be able to take those steps forward every day in creating a business that I love in a way that I love. Because even when my ego and mind are telling me that I can't trust myself, at least I know I can always trust my intuition and where it's guiding me because it has more answers than my mind ever will. Promoting your intuition to CEO of your business creates massive and significant change over time. And today, In the final episode of this Human Design and Business four-episode podcast series, I'm going to share with you the the behind-the-scenes of my own exact process that I use for how I balance building an intuition-led business with my human design and Gene Keys energetic blueprints. It's how I do it practically and how I do things on a daily basis and how I look in terms of the longer term planning of my business so that I can take steps forward 
even when I am confronted by these challenges such as imposter syndrome. So there's actually four layers that I have to fully implementing, balancing, and taking action in an intuition-led business using human design and gene keys. And as I go through them, each layer builds upon the last. It's important to make sure that you have one layer, you know, mastered or implemented or where it feels somewhat natural for you before you move on to the next. Like these layers build upon each other, just like I was talking about the layers of the six line hexagram build upon each other. So the first layer, layer one, is your intuition, calibration, connection, and recognition. This is where you calibrate your intuition and master your alignment signals. This is the foundation. This is like the big word here that I said is calibration. This is getting in touch with your intuition and understanding what it's telling you so that you feel really clear in understanding, like hearing and being aware and understanding what your intuition is telling you through your signals of alignment. These signals, this alignment, your signature, your not self, your type, and your authority are, are big pieces here. These come from you know, your human design type. And these, these are truly the big three from my perspective when you're getting started with your, you know, starting to align your business to your human design or starting to use human design to create a more aligned business for yourself. You know, your authority is your primary communication tool for your intuition. Your signature and your not self are your primary communication tools in terms of alignment with your signature being the sign that you're on the right track and your not self being the sign that something needs to change, something's out of alignment. And the more deeply, like as I've been going through this process for myself, the more deeply that I understood how I felt my own authority, how I felt my own signature of success, and how I felt my own not self of bitterness, the more quickly I recognized what alignment felt like and did not feel like for me. And while these words can be true and they connect, you know, depending, you know, every projector has success and has bitterness, but like how, what I've come to learn in terms of who I coach and who I work with and just in conversations with friends is that even though those, those words might be the same and they might be the right words, how you personally experience it is different. You can feel things in a different way. And so this first layer is all about getting really clear about how you experience these things and what they're telling you. You know, once I realized, the more quickly that I realized what alignment felt like for me or didn't feel like for me, it helped me move with so much more agility, so much more ease and flow as all of these feelings and knowings popped up. It made it really easy for me to say, okay, I'm not on the right track right now. Something needs to change. And it helped me get to the answer of what that was so much quicker and so much easier because I knew very easily when my intuition was saying stop and when my intuition was saying, oh, you're definitely on the right track. You know, it really helps me come back to center when I've wandered off course without all of those huge ebbs and flows and times of where you feel a lack of clarity. It really helps you come back to that center much more quickly and to navigate things with a lot more ease and without the big, you know, emotional swings and periods where you just have no idea what to do next. So for this layer, like this is all about really getting reflecting and getting in touch with yourself. And so I have some calibration questions for you. I want you to think back to when your intuition or your authority made itself known to you and perhaps you didn't listen, you know, or what happened when you didn't listen. You know, I think I can think back to times in my life, definitely not even related to my business, but times early in my life where I had that splenic knowing and I choose, chose to ignore it. What happened from that? Like I, you know, just kind of thinking through like how I felt it, how I knew it was a knowing and ultimately why did I choose to ignore it and getting really clear on that helped me get back more in touch with my own splenic authority. What did it feel like or what did you experience when your authority or intuition made itself known, or even your alignment. Think about each of these three things, your signature, your not self, and your authority. And it's like, 
what did you experience? How did you feel it? What were you thinking? What situation were you in? How did you navigate? You know, once you had that awareness, how did you navigate it? Just getting really clear on that so that you have that awareness when things kind of shift <laughs> in, in your own awareness going forward. And I want you to think of a handful of times that you experienced your not self, your sign that you are, you were out of alignment. What did it feel like or show up as? And what patterns or commonalities between all of those experiences pop up for you when you think about it? I also want you to think on the flip side of a handful of times you experienced your signature or the sign that you are acting in alignment. What did that feel like? What did that show you? What are the patterns and commonalities between all of those experiences that you notice that you can become aware of? Moving into layer two. Layer two is all about daily intuitive conditioning and alignment. This is your daily devotion to your higher self and your intuition. Every single morning, I check in with myself and I get really clear on where in the previous day or earlier in that day where I felt success, where I felt bitterness from that short period. Because if you reflect on it consistently, it gets really, really easy to see when those patterns start coming up before they become bigger problems. And if you aren't a journaler, if you're not someone who journals, you can speak it out. You can just contemplate it. Sometimes I just think about these things like, okay, yesterday, where did I feel success and where did I feel bitterness? I think about them as I'm just making my morning coffee. If I don't have time to sit with my journal, this layer can be as formal or as informal as you want it to be. But the key thing is that you do it daily, that you check in with yourself daily about what felt like what felt in alignment for you and what felt out of alignment for you. And it's important as you notice these things that felt in alignment and out of alignment to ask your intuition why. <laughs> Use whatever your authority is. For me, that's my splenic authority, but it's ask whatever your authority is to hone in specifically about what the cause of that success or bitterness, if you're me, a projector, and what specifically needs to change and what actions need to be taken from there to decrease the bitterness and increase the feeling of success. So you want to ask your authority what specifically needs to change and what actions need to be taken to decrease whatever that not self is and to increase whatever that signature feeling is. And because in layer one, you got really clear on that, that's why this process becomes a lot quicker because you are so much more familiar with how those things feel for you. And this is where my five-step process to align your business to your human design comes in, which you can actually learn more about in the free workshop series, Human Design, Marketing Strategy, and Business Alignment. There's actually an entire workshop devoted to this five-step process that I, that I have, and you can check it out by clicking the link below in the episode description. But before I move on to the next layer, I just wanna say these daily check-ins, or I wanna emphasize, I should say, that these daily check-ins and recalibrations are so important because as you begin to notice patterns, as you begin to notice those ebbs and flows within yourself and within your business, you become so much more sensitive to the messages of your intuition. And that is where things really start to, you know, where the rubber hits the road, so to speak, when it comes to making, having your intuition make those decisions in your business that then you can take action upon. Layer three is intuitive business strategy and planning. So whereas layer two is all about the daily check-ins, layer three is all about doing things on a monthly, I would say monthly or quarterly basis in your business. This is where you use your human design and your gene keys to kind of take the longer, a little bit of a longer view. It's how you decide some of the longer term projects or priorities that are in your business, looking at a little bit of a broader lens than the daily basis. And you can see why you would need to understand how things are going on a daily basis before you start trying to look through a wider lens in your business, right? So here we are, two layers into this process. We're into the third now, and we're still talking about the most foundational level of human design, 
type and authority. This was not by accident. This is not by accident in my process that things are fairly basic when it in those first two layers as you get the swing of how to incorporate your human design and gene keys into your business. But in layer three, now we're going to start to dive even deeper as we step out of the day to day and into more of the strategy and planning of your business. So as I look at what I have coming up in the next month or quarter, I typically look at this at least on a monthly basis, if not every two to three weeks where I kind of just recalibrate myself. Sometimes I even look at a full quarter ahead. It depends on what's changing and moving and what I have coming up. But I check in with myself every time I take this longer, I set aside time to look at this longer view of my business and I check in with myself. I check in with my authority to confirm that everything that was already in my plan still feels intuitively aligned and not just aligned, but like exciting for me. So I will take a look, like say the first week of the month and see what I have on my list to do for the next month. And I'll check in with every single thing on that list. Like sometimes it's a couple of things, sometimes it's like 10 things, but I say, okay, how does this feel? How does this feel? How does this feel? And listen, take a moment to listen to what my authority is telling me. Like, does this still feel like it's right for me right now? And then from there, once I check in with everything I kind of already knew was on my list, I take a look at any new projects or tasks that I may want to add to my list. And I just do another quick check in with those to make sure that I'm excited and do want to actually add those to my list or like add them somewhere in the list of priorities to do in the next month or quarter or something, you know, in the future. And at this point in the process, I really start to look at the projects and priorities in relation to the deeper pieces of my own human design and gene keys. I look at them in relation to my profile. I look at them, I think about them in relation to my defined and undefined centers, my channels, my prominent gates, to see what things that are on my list truly play to my gifts and also what shadows and blocks might challenge me along the way. So I think about, okay, this project really feels aligned with my 5-1 authority, and I can see how I can nav- like tweak this idea a little bit so that it even better aligns with that 5-1 authority. That's a lot of what I do. Or, oh, because I have an undefined um, ego center heart, com- you know, it's all about commitment. So I need to make sure that I'm prioritizing things correctly and also giving myself space in terms of deadlines because I have inconsistency when it comes to commitment or being able to follow through on things. So I need to make sure that I have wiggle room in terms of what I commit to for the next month or two months, right? This is the point where I start asking for a lot of clarity from my higher self and my intuition, or I sometimes think through how I can, you know, if there's too much on my list or I, you know, depending on what's inspiring me and what's not inspiring me. I might need to reimagine my goals and the projects so that they better align with the nuances of my chart through this, these deeper layers of my profile centers and channels. So I know that sounds kind of vague, but so let me give you a quick example. I have a defined Ajna. So as someone who has this defined Ajna, how can I simplify this or make like this project or make it a clearer process? As someone who also, you know, so I'm thinking, how can I make this a framework or a better process? And then as someone with also, who also has that undefined sacral center, how can I take on this bigger project in a way so that I can also manage my energy while I build it? You know, it's like having that balance of how can I simplify and also how can I manage my own energy given some of the shadows that I might face between the defined Ajna and the undefined sacral. And I look at these things and more all together. For example, I have the channel of structuring, the 43 and 23. So that really invites me to simplify things even further all the time. So this layer, the third layer here, really helps me get my intuition more involved in what is typically more of a masculine structured process, it's, you know, business planning is typically more structured, typically more masculine, and it helps me get my intuition more involved. And it brings awareness to the roadblocks that might come up <laughs> along the way so that my intuition can recognize them before I've gone too far down the wrong road or the road that's going to make me have to come back because <laughs> I end up feeling more of that not self uh, bitterness. Once I kind of go through this process with the projects coming up for the next month or quarter, 
once I feel really clear and excited about the, the plan and the strategy that I've created, my intuition can then delegate the actual doing of all of those projects to my human self and or team members, depending on the stage of your business, you know, depending on how big your business is, you might be doing everything. So it's more of your intuition delegating to your human self. If you have a team, you might be the middle person who delegates between your intuition and the team. Totally, you know, same process, just might have different people involved. But regardless, at this point, it's really where you're, you create that plan and you create that plan to get it done, all while staying on track and in alignment through all of the daily check-ins that you're doing from the previous layer. So this is really like a big step where you you see the big picture, you get the big projects and tasks and initiatives, all you make sure they check in with your alignment and then your checkpoints along the way go back to layer, those layer two daily check-ins. All right, the last layer, this is all about business and brand refinement. And this is something that's ongoing. It's also, it for me personally, it's almost like a separate container than these first three layers of business alignment. Like I said, the first three layers are really about integration into the daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly operations of your business. And when you have a consistent process for using human design to strengthen your intuition, and allowing your intuition to sit in the driver's seat of how you build and grow your business, this last layer here is a lot less procedural. The first three layers are really structured, very procedural. This last layer is a lot more feminine and flowy. <laughs> so now that those first, those first, all those processes are set in those first three layers that I've built into my business, like I said, in this kind of a separate container in my mind, I set aside time in my week to just study whatever is calling my attention from my chart or my gene keys, to just contemplate it on a wider or broader level. How I see it and its patterns in my life, what shadows it brings up, how I can take those lessons and teachings and apply them in my own business. In this layer, I don't think in the structure of my operations because that's already built out. This is a lot more of just contemplating on a broader level, letting my mind run kind of wild and seeing where it takes me and what things along the way pop up that can be refined in the way that my business is run or how I market or how I attract clients. Here's where I allocate a lot of my studies into the gene keys specifically right now, personally in my business. I'm right now really deep into the Venus sequence. And even though the Venus sequence doesn't directly impact my business on a day-to-day -day basis, studying it is what opens up your heart. Your Venus sequence is all about opening your heart. And so the more that I study it, the more I feel my heart open, and that has indirect benefits for what I do and why I do it in my business and how I can serve my clients better. You know, maybe as I'm studying it, it gives me a new idea or a new project to add to my list. Maybe it even gives me an idea about how I can better coach, how I can tweak my own marketing and messaging in some way. And it definitely has as I've been studying it. I can feel how my messaging has become more refined and more like specific, but in a good way specific as I go through this and discover new things about myself. Right now I'm following a sequence, but at other times I've just picked a certain center or I've played with the transits to help me kind of, you know, just whatever's calling my attention. I have no structure. I have no process for the most part. It's kind of like, what do I feel like studying today or what's calling my attention today? And although play and experimentation are part of every single layer of my process, starting from layer one, two, three, and in this one, it's especially important and apparent in this last layer. So it's really about taking what you're playing with or contemplating and just like testing it in different places in your business without that structure. Before I wrap up, I just want to refresh on those four layers one more time. So the first layer is your intuition, calibration, and foundation building. The second layer are your daily intuitive check-ins, realignments, and recalibrations. The third layer are your monthly and quarterly intuitive strategy plan and planning processes. And the fourth layer is 
deeper study and intuitive business and brand refinement. If aligning your business and marketing strategy to your human design is something that's calling to you, then you can take the first steps towards it in my new free workshop series, Human Design, Marketing Strategy, and Business Alignment. The topics that we've discussed in this four-week human design and business podcast series are just one small component of what's covered in the workshops. The workshop series lays the foundation for creating and implementing an effective marketing strategy using your human design, a marketing strategy that aligns with your unique energy so that you can continue to build, grow, and scale your purpose-driven business with less force, less frustration, and less burnout. You can find the link below in the episode description. And if you liked or resonated with what you heard today, make sure you share this episode with your community, tagging me at Brie Kirk, or leave me a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. In the next episode of the Frequency and Flow podcast, I'm going to be discussing how your human design pressure centers impact your business journey, which is the first episode of another new podcast series that I'm going to be doing all about the journey of entrepreneurship and the human design pressure centers. Yes, I'm doing another podcast series immediately after I just wrapped up this one. It's a little crazy, but trust me on this one. You are going to love it. I'll see you there.